Hello Internet, today we're going to be looking into something new. Uh, this is a UI framework that I found for uh, .NET Core. Uh, the cool thing is it's based off of WPF, if you've ever used that. Uh, so if you've ever developed a like legacy Windows application in WPF or used the Universal Windows platform, it's going to be almost the same. But this is built from the ground up in .NET Core, and the cool thing is it works across platforms. So you can take an app written in uh, in this and bring it to Linux or Mac or Windows, which is something you couldn't do with uh, a universal Windows platform app or WPF. Those are Windows only. This works everywhere. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just gonna sort of do like a hello world application. We're gonna kind of set up some bindings and stuff and that's gonna be pretty much it. This is just sort of an introduction. I've kind of dug into it a little bit, but I'm not, super deep into it yet because it's fairly new it's still in beta i think i'll post a link to the the project site so you can you can check more about it out uh, but there's a visual studio extension uh that's that's what i have installed here it's going to add these two template projects uh the avalonia application and the avalonia m vv m application which stands for model view view model which is just a a design pattern for these kind of apps we're going to stick to the normal one uh, just because, and we're going to call it Avalonia Hello World. Why not? <laughs> and so if I hit OK and create that, it's just going to create a really basic Hello World application. So not going to be too much going on there. Uh, and you'll see, if you're familiar with WPF, it looks the same. We have a main window app, or main window uh, .xaml and main window .xaml .cs and the same for app. And so everything looks pretty much the same. There's just this Avalonia X XAML loader, but that that's really the only difference that I've been able to find. All of this looks the same, uh, except for that again. And then we have to attach the development tools so we can actually debug some of this stuff. But yeah, this is your app and I can start this. There's two options for frameworks. We can do .NET Core 2 or uh, .NET 4.6. So I, I'll just keep it on .NET Core 2 because that'll work everywhere and why not? <laughs> so if I just run this, this is going to be like our main app. The first thing it's going to do is start this .NET uh, window and this is our app. So here is pretty much all we get. It's just displaying hello world in the text. And so that's cool. We have this window and it's displaying that and I could take this code and put it on a Mac and it would do the same thing. That's neat, but let's do something a little bit more. So we have hello world. I want to change this. So instead of saying hello world, it says hello, your name. And then, yeah. And then just kind of updates it as after you click a button. So the idea is you're going to type your name in and click a button and then it's going to pop up hello uh, when you do that. So we need a stack panel. There we go. We have a stack panel. <laughs> so let's create three things. We want a text block, which is going to be our greeting. Uh, so I'll just call this our greeting. That, yeah, there we go. This is going to be a vertical stack panel. So all of those options are still there. You can even see we get IntelliSense. Uh, so it's actually suggesting some of the options to me, which is neat. Uh, let's add a uh, text box. So if I get a text box, uh, this is just going to, by default, is it going to be some name? I'll just throw that in there. I don't know if that's actually correct. We'll find out. Yep. Cool. Uh, so we get that. We get this little demo box and it, the cool thing is, is this is actually more responsive I found than the WPF stuff. So it's like popping up all these errors as I type, which is super cool. And it's like instant. Maybe that's just because it's a super small application. I haven't really done anything big with this yet. Um, I'm not really sure you want to with how new it is, uh, but you do let me know. <laughs> anyway, let's say, say hi. There we go. There's our app. <laughs> so there's nothing, we're not doing any bindings here or anything, but 
there's all of our controls and I can just start this again and we'll we'll get the same thing. I okay, so everything's stretched. You probably don't want that. Uh, I'm going to horizontal alignment, set this to center, and we'll set the width equal to say 300. Uh, the max width. Uh, so it, it won't get any bigger than 300, but if you size the window too small, it will clamp. So now that we do this, that should be smaller. It should not do that. <laughs> um, horizontal content alignment. Oh, oh, okay. So the default. I should talk about this. The default for the horizontal alignment, which adjusts in horizontal space where your panel is going to be, the stack panel is just going to be a, a box. Uh, and so by default, that's going to be stretched. So it's going to take up as much space as it can. What I just did is set it the horizontal alignment to center, which means it puts it in the center uh, and it only takes up as much space as the components need. Uh, so it's only going to be as big as the biggest one of these subcomponents of its children. We don't really want that. We're going to go back to width. <laughs> so we can start this again. Hopefully it improves. Our inspector had shown something better. There we go. So it's sort of centered there. Just because I'm being nitpicky, let's vertically align this and say, put that in the center. And there we go. So now what we need to do is we need to add a data binding and say this will be binding to the name. Uh -huh. And this is going to be binding to our greeting. Uh, so we don't have either of those set up yet. Uh, so it, it'll probably break if I run this. I'm not entirely sure what will happen. It shouldn't work. Yeah, we just get empty. Uh, so what we need to do is actually set a data context here. And so data context is going to describe the data that is stored for whatever context you're in. Uh, so think of it like a stack so or a tree, if you will. Uh, all of this UI layout is in a tree. So you have a window, which is the root, and then you have your stack panel, which is just a child of the root. And then each of these are children of that. If I add a data context to the window, every child of it is going to have that data context plus its own. Uh, so what I want to be able to do is just add this and set, we'll set it to the stack panel. And so the easiest way, there's a, there's a number of ways to do this. Let's do this the actual easiest way, which is just to go into here and say, after initialize component, this dot, data context equals something. This will set the data context for the window uh, because that's just what this main window is inheriting from. So main window is the class that is based off of this window. So that's that's how all of this works. Uh, let's add spaces here because that's annoying me. <laughs> there we go. So that'll just change the title of the window. Uh, now we actually need a model. So normally you would throw this in like a models folder. So let's actually do that. And so we have our models. Let's create a hello, <laughs> hello data mo view model, let's call it. That's better. So this is just an empty view model. We need to extend I notify property changed. So this is just going to actually notify things that properties have changed. Uh, the way this works is it fires off an event and gives the name of the property that you just changed. And then, oops, exception has been encountered. Cannot locate resharper annotations in the current solution. Uh, would you like to include annotation files in the current project right now? No. Uh, so it was trying to do resharper things. We don't, we don't need that. Uh, so, Cool, it's stuck in the caller member name. That's a compiler time thing. Uh, what it will let us do is give a empty function and C Sharp will automatically take the name of the component we're calling it from, the property we're calling it from, and actually plug it in. I'll show you that in just a sec. Uh, so how this works 
is the way data binding works uh, is you will have properties. You bind your objects to properties, but C Sharp has no way, or the UI framework has no way of knowing when those change. Uh, so when you implement those, you have to actually have something that tells them that they've changed. There's a number of these notify property changed or changing or things like that. And there, those are the ways you notify them. So in this specific case, I notify property change is going to fire after a property has changed. And that's going to tell all the UI elements that bind to that property that they need to update. So we have, oops, that was weird. <laughs> we have two properties, right? We have our private string of our greeting and a private string of our name. If I think I got those right. Uh, how do we, yep, greeting name, cool. So those are the fields that I created. These are the field names. Now we need properties to actually bind to those. So you have to actually implement them yourself because just auto properties aren't going to cut it for this. Uh, because if you do that, you don't call this an event. It doesn't get called and then nothing works. So if we do a greeting, uh, it's gonna collapse on me because of course it will. Get, we're just gonna return the greeting. Nothing fancy has to go on there, but for the set, okay, I really don't like that. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> uh, the way we're going to do this is if a value, if the value passed into this property is not equal to the greeting, so if it's changed, then we are going to set the greeting equal to the value. That's not how you do that. Equal to the value, and then call on property changed and i don't need to provide a uh a name here normally you would need to provide the name of greeting to this to do that uh but resharper is actually uh has a little bit better template than what visual studio will just give you if you're just using visual studio you won't get this uh, but if you do and you can just add that from the compiler services library that's going to pull in the name of the property you're calling from. So if I don't give it any argument, it's just going to work. It effectively is doing the same thing as if I had said name of greeting. That, that's the same thing. Uh, if you want to do it this way, this works too. I don't think I would recommend against this and just typing it out. If you do that, you're going to run into issues. If you ever have to refactor this greeting here, there's a good chance you'll miss this uh, and you're not going to get any errors. It's just not going to work. It's not going to update uh, and that can get really annoying later on. Uh, so either do one of the, the automated ones. If you have C sharp seven or above, I think you get the name of and that so you can just use that. Otherwise, just use the, the caller member name. Anyway, now that we have all of that, let's change this to be a fun thing. There we go. Uh, so this is just a fun little lambda that just says return this. Uh, it's just a shorthand. I think that's pretty much the same number of characters, so it's not really shorthand, but uh, it's similar. <laughs> so now that we have that, let's try... What's the suggestion here? One sec. <laughs> Invert if statement. Uh, so this would just be inverting this to an equals and then just automatically returning to exit, but it's going to result in the same thing. So that's just the pattern that I started using ages ago. So I'm just going to keep using it. Uh, name, we are going to get our name. That's not how you type that. There we go. And then for set, if our value is not equal to our name, then the name equals the value and we'll just call our property changed event. This has this property changed has to be called afterwards uh, and you're going to want to call it on the UI thread. Uh, so if you're doing a bunch of threading stuff, make sure you get have like a dispatcher or something to call this on the UI thread because it UI updates happen on the UI thread. If they don't, bad things happen. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but anyway, we have a greeting, we have our name, 
Those should both be bound now. So I can set this data context to a new hello view model. Uh, there we go. Import missing reference, sure. There we go. So there's that, that should get set now. And so our hello view model should get bound onto our main window. So the greeting and the name should get pulled in. We don't have any defaults. So I'm actually gonna set those in the main window just so we have a default value for our greeting, which is just going to be enter a name. Enter a name and click the button <laughs> to button. <laughs> there we go, cool. Let's actually add a semicolon so it gets less angry at us. And that should be good. So if this works, we're going to see enter a new that didn't work. The object invoked has disconnected from its thing. I don't know what this means. This is weird. I've never seen this before. Uh huh. Unable to start program.net. Okay. Well, that's weird. Let's switch to <laughs> .NET 4.6. I'm going to need to figure out what this is because I have no idea what's going on. I don't think I did anything. Maybe I did. We'll find out. So one sec. <laughs> OK, uh, so it works now. All I had to do was restart Visual Studio. Not really sure what causes that, but apparently it's a long issue that's been going on. People have been reporting it since like Visual Studio 2013. So not a new thing, uh, but new to me. So I have it running now. I haven't changed any of the code. There's no, no changes. The only thing I did was switch back to .NET Core 2 because clearly it didn't work. You can see we have enter a name and click the button. Let's try that. Let's say name, say hi. Okay, I clicked the button, nothing, nothing happened. We don't have anything attached to the button, so nothing is going to happen. There's no anything happening. <laughs> um, so we need, we need to add something to this button. We're gonna do this the easy way for now, uh, just because that, that's the easy way. There's really two ways that I know of in WPF and uh, Universal Windows Platform and things like that to handle this. There is an event which is going to be on click. And so this is going to get called, I think it just might be click. I might be wrong there. I'm going to pretend like it's on click. I might be wrong. <laughs> so there's the two ways that I know of is commands and callbacks or, or functions. Uh, so you can either say, specify a specific thing to call, uh, which is just going to invoke a function in your uh, code behind. So it'd go to this main window. We'd have to implement a method here. The alternative is to implement a command and actually bind to that command and then invoke it that way, which is just a, a, an abstraction pattern on the command. So your, your code behind doesn't get all of this extra stuff. Ideally, you shouldn't need to touch this. Uh, we did here because this is just the easiest way to get this set up. You can set this as a resource or something else uh, and you don't need to put it here. But if you're just getting started, I've found that this is easier. If you keep doing this, you'll run into a bunch of uh, code smell where it just gets harder and harder to keep it all up to date. But for small projects, it's just easier. <laughs> so. We need this on click to uh, on button clicked. Now, I don't think there is any way to generate this function. It doesn't appear to be. So I think what I need is a public void that with an object, which is going to be our sender. Uh, and this is just basic event things. So we're going to have event args. There we go. And so this should get called now when we click. It's not going to do anything. There's nothing getting called or anything like that. 
I'm just adding it because I'm not entirely certain that it's going to work. Doesn't look like on click is defined, but I'm curious if we'll get an error. Looks like it. Cannot set unknown member on click. So we need to figure out how to do this. <laughs> it might be click. To an event handler of, okay. So we are actually getting an actual error now. Uh, could not convert object on button clicked of type string uh, to a event handler with routed event args. Oh, we want that. Let's switch these two out. Uh, okay, there we go. So routed event args are actually kind of cool. Uh, they kind of are, remember we were talking about the tree? If you click a button, you don't want to, if your button is over another button, you don't want to click the button behind it too. Uh, so a routed event arg is actually going to pass it through in order and things can either choose to pass them on or not. Uh, I, th I think that's how that works. I I'd have to double check, but to my knowledge, that's that's the way they, they've worked in the past is if you click something or you have something that you don't want to pass deeper into your, your stack, uh, you can use a routed event arg instead of just an event. Uh, and then things, the control itself decides whether or not to pass it through. So now that we have that, hopefully this will actually invoke it. I could, I didn't really check if it was still compiling, but it is awesome. So if I click this, we get into our button event. So I don't really care what the anything is. Um, what we can do is grab the sender. Do we want to do that? Um, maybe. So what we need to do is we, we need to get out our data model because we don't have a way of translating the data model from here. I could do this data context as a hello view model. Sure. Um, and do something like this and say context dot greeting equals hello. Um, let's do an interpolated string. So let's do hello um context dot name cool so what this is going to do is convert our data context back to the hello view model it's just a generic object and in, in the data context so we to get that back out we do that and then we just set the greeting on it to whatever we want and then the greeting already has the implementation to notify the ui so this should update our ui uh, Assume it's not null. So this will work, uh, but really commands are probably the more elegant way to do this. We're going to stop here. I'm actually going to just take this out because we don't need to keep hopping back and forth. It says, hello. That's good for a start. So let's say, hello world. Awesome. <laughs> and there we go. So now I can click this button and it just says, hi. Um, and yeah, it, it's working. You might be able to kind of see some of the, the code issues here. You can have commands. If you use a command, it will pass. You can set a parameter, which you could just pass in like the name or the data context or whatever and have it figure it out for you. That's probably the best way to do this. But this is easier. Um, so depending on where you are in what you're building, you're going to have to make that choice. Uh, I'll probably cover commands later. That's a little bit too much to go into in this video, but I'll leave this here. It's just a basic way to say hello in Avalonia. Uh, and you can bring this to, at least I think you can bring this to Mac and Linux and Windows. And that sh I think that's it. Uh, and it should just work. Uh, a few things, the UI and stuff is not, this isn't a WPF wrapper. It doesn't compile the WPF code. You can probably see that because it's starting this. This is their own thing. Uh, so if I like add a scroll bar, 
the scroll bar is totally different than what you'd get in WPF. So it's, it's, it's similar style, but it is different. Uh, and, and that's pretty much the same thing in, in everything that I've tried. It's, it looks like a Windows thing, which is the point, but it's not. Um, and so depending on what you're using, it might matter, but I'll leave that up to you. You guys can figure it out. But I will put links in the description so you guys can come and check this out. It's fairly easy to get started on Windows. I had some issues on Mac. Uh, their installation instructions are a little bit uh, confusing. So I'll put some helpful stuff in the description for that too if you're using Mac or Linux or just want to do it from the command line. Uh, at least right now their documentation isn't right. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, do you guys want to like talk a little bit about this or like game development or something else? We have a Discord channel. You can come and join that. That's also in the description. It'll be right at the bottom. Uh, we'll just talk about projects and things. But yeah, that's it for this video. So until next time, see you, internet.